I found a photo a few years ago in an old family picture album that had been stored away unseen for quite some time. It's a photo that my dad took of my sister, Lisa, and me at the Tiff Park Zoo in Albany, Georgia around 1956. I'm the one in the cowboy hat. I remember visiting this little zoo in Albany several times when I was a kid, and I remember seeing this elephant chain for public viewing each time I was there. I also remember the distressed look in her eyes. It's funny how some scenes stay with you for the rest of your life. All these years later, I remember the elephant's eyes, as if her gaze had seared its way into my subconscious. And I remember her chains, too. The Tiff Park Zoo was located on a mere eight acres. The animals had precious little room to move. This elephant had almost no room, and I could sense her awful predicament. Even as a kid, I knew it was wrong to chain her like that. It seemed inhumane. Perhaps that was because I possessed a human brain. Scientists say that the infants of Homo sapiens, those mammals we call humans, are born with brains that are only about 25% developed. The adult human brain is about four times the size it is at birth. As we mature, our brains grow. And into these growing brains, we pour emotion and memory, thoughts about art and poetry, thoughts of war and peace, mathematics, science, religion, the bittersweet memories of our first loves, our personal geography, our fears and discontent, our dreams and desires, our vision, our roadmaps, and as we age, our thoughts about death and the end of this life. Most other species of mammals those mammals we call animals, are born with brains that are already 90% developed. This suggests that they live much less emotional lives than we humans. The elephants are exceptions, though. Ironically, the elephant is most akin to us. Infant elephants are born with brains that are only about 35% developed. As the baby elephants mature, their brains grow and into these expanding brains are poured the same emotions that fill our own brains as we grow into mature human beings. Elephants remember, and they make complicated maps. They have their own mathematics, their own mythology and religion. They utter poetry when none of us are listening. They dance and sing and fall in love. They feel anger and sense betrayal. They seek justice and make peace, and toward the end, they anticipate death. They remember all the days that came before the moment. Like us humans, elephants do not forget. I don't forget either. I keep thinking about that elephant's eyes and about her chains. It gives me cause to consider what my own son sees in his daily life. There be all kinds of chains in this world. Not all of them are attached to the legs of elephants. Albany played a significant role in the civil rights movement, and the city was visited by Dr. Martin Luther King on more than one occasion. The city was also featured in W.E.B. Du Bois' book, The Souls of Black Folk. As a white kid growing up in the Deep South, during the time of segregation, I saw things that troubled me to put it mildly. Indeed, I saw firsthand the bigotry and ignorance that attempted to thwart the civil rights movement. People who did not experience that time are often hard-pressed to appreciate the tremendous brutality and injustice that occurred during the struggle for equality. A lot of that searing imagery from my formative years stays with me still, and it makes me wonder what childhood memories my son will continue to carry with him more than a half century from now. I would like to think that John's memories will all be beautiful and benign, but the realist in me knows better. The world has yet to abandon the entirety of its cruelty, and there are still far too many chains to be easily ignored. The Tiff Park Zoo closed its doors in 1977. 
Between 1975 and 1977, the zoo's animals were transferred to the newly built Chiha Wild Animal Park, which had been developed three miles away. Chiha occupied over 100 acres, so there was plenty of room for the animals. This new park was designed by zoologist Jim Fowler, a native of Albany. You may remember Fowler from the popular TV program Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, which aired from 1963 to 1988. Fowler was intent on designing an animal park that would be far superior to the Taft Park Zoo. Today, Chiha is one of only two accredited zoos in the state of Georgia. Interestingly, there are no elephants at Chiha. The last ones left in 2004. These were Tang and Zulu, pachyderms that had been acquired in 1978, but released to the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee by Chiha's new and progressive zoo management when they realized that their park was inappropriate for such large and majestic creatures. But what of the elephant that haunts my childhood memories, the behemoth my dad captured in this now faded family photo? Recently, I ran across a newspaper article from 1977 that described how an elephant named Laska was moved from the Tiff Park Zoo to Chiha. Apparently, Laska was led by her trainer through the streets of Albany, the three miles to the new park. According to the article, there was an incident along the way when Laska became spooked by a train whistle as her entourage passed near the city's train depot. Laska was eventually calmed and she arrived safely at her new home. I assumed that Lasco was the same animal that my dad had photographed two decades earlier, although I have no way of knowing for sure. I'd certainly like to think that she was one and the same, as the thought of that poor chained elephant living long enough to see better pastures is comforting. I've no idea what became of Lasca. I assumed that she lived out her final years at Chiha. I do hope they were good ones.